Welcome to my tutorial on how to install Linux Mint onto a Windows 10 machine using VirtualBox. I'm making this because it was harder than I had imagined when I built my uh, Windows 10 machine and I wanted to help anybody else out that might be struggling to get the performance they wanted on their Linux Mint uh, VMs and um, there's some extra steps that you, you know, might, that might throw you off when you're installing this VM compared to other Linux machines. So I'm making this for anybody, you know, beginner or not, you know, to, to fully get a Linux Mint VM up and running on your computer. So without further ado, you're going to need VirtualBox, obviously, to virtualize this OS on your system. And then you're going to need the Linux Mint ISO, which you can get from linuxmint.com. It is totally free. I'm I'm using the Linux 20.1 Cinnamon 64-bit edition. Um, you know, any any one will work. I just happen to like Cinnamon. So once this is downloaded, it'll be just under two gigs if you're using this version, and that's all you'll need to get started. So boot up VirtualBox, install it if you haven't already. And if it's this is your first time, you won't have anything on the left here. I have one already. This is my machine, but I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to name it the Linux Mint Tutorial. And despite what happens down here um, for the type and version, it, it, it tries to auto-detect it based on what you type in here. But no matter what you name it, it doesn't matter. Just make sure the type is Linux and the version is Ubuntu 64-bit. reason you don't choose other Linux, you'll notice there is no Linux Mint in this dropdown. The reason you don't choose other Linux is because Linux Mint is actually upstream of Ubuntu. So it's kind of built off of it in a way. And um, because of that, we just tell VirtualBox to use Ubuntu 64-bit as the version type to base it off of. So these are your settings. Click Next. Oops. Sorry, my mouse double clicks sometimes. Um, the memory size, I choose anything above four gigs and that's what I recommend. I'm gonna choose eight gigs just because I have the memory to spare. My machine is 32 gigabytes of memory, um, but I think you only need four. So do whatever you can, I like eight. Um, and then you're gonna create a virtual hard disk and you're gonna choose the VDI dynamically allocated so that it only takes up the space that it's actually using and this is very important right here this needs to be at least um, 20 gigs or so because Linux Mint needs a certain amount to actually install so this I'm setting to 20 gigs as the max space of the hard disk and then I'm going to cl click create and it's going to create the hard disk on my machine and you'll notice it creates a uh, item here Linux Mint tutorial and you're ready to start your machine for the very first time. So what we're going to do now after we start it is select the ISO image we're going to install. So you can navigate and find the downloaded ISO file. It should look something like this. And that'll just be wherever you download it on your computer. And once you select it, just click Start. And so basically what we're doing here is we have this installation um, ISO of Linux Mint, which will permanently install it onto your VM. But right now we're booting up kind of the the in-between installation OS version of uh, Linux Mint. So once this boots up, um, there will be a piece of software that allows us to install Linux Mint permanently. All right, so Linux Mint has booted up. That took about 30 seconds or so for me. It might take longer for you. Um, but you'll notice it just looks like a regular operating system, all fine and dandy, but it's not actually installed yet. So you have to actually install Linux Mint on your machine. So double click this thing on the desktop called Install Linux Mint and choose your language. Click Continue. It'll take a second. And yep, choose your keyboard layout. Probably just the default works for most of you. Um, install multimedia codecs. This is what's important. If you didn't set the hard drive size right, this is not going to work. But you definitely want these um, if you're going to be doing anything on this beyond super basic Linux functions. Um, click continue. And what is next? All right. And then you choose erase disk and install Linux Mint. Obviously, there is nothing on the disk right now, so this is fine. Click Install Now. And it's going to say a bunch of stuff here. Just click Continue. None of this really matters because this is your personal VM. 
Um, choose your location, probably because it's choosing the server to use, um, or I guess the time zone. And then just enter your information here. Test user, test password. I'm just going to make it test. And I'm going to have it log me in automatically because I don't actually care um, about logging in or locking this down. And once you click continue, it will start the installation of Linux Mint. This will take some time depending on your computer. And um, we can circle back once it's done. But basically, this is going to finish and you will have a newly minted Linux Mint uh, VM installed on this, you know, virtual on this virtual box image here. Okay, so the installation has finished, and it's saying you can continue testing, but we're going to restart the uh, virtual machine now, and we're going to let it, uh, well, I guess it's saying press enter once you removed it, just press enter, nothing's going to happen, um, and in fact, once it boots up here real quick, I'm actually going to shut it down, and that is because... I want to uh, edit some of the settings because Linux Mint is not going to run properly based on the default settings um, that we selected when we actually created the VM. Okay, it's booted up, so I'm going to shut it down. And now, once it's shut down, go to settings, and this is the key part that most people miss. Go to system and go to, so we already set the memory here, right? And you go to processor, this is always set to one. Most likely you have more than one processor, uh, you know, to, to core to use here. So I'm going to um, set this to more like four or six, um, kind of depending on what your machine can handle. I'm just gonna do four for now, that's all you really need. And then go to the next tab, sorry, not the next tab, go to display and click this button, enable 3D acceleration. This is huge. Um, and the video memory, this is also huge. It defaults it to 16 MB. That's a ridiculously low um, video memory for Linux Mint. So just jack that all the way up to 128. Um, you probably uh, probably going to be fine on that. I don't think you can even go any higher. So that is, well, I was just checking between the other one, but that's all you need to do to really set it up in terms of the settings there. And now you can start your Linux machine back up and we're gonna do the final steps to ensure that this works um, to its full capacity. So let it boot up again. And this next steps are very crucial. All right, it's finally booted up. So now you have a properly configured VM um, of Linux Mint and it is installed on your computer. Now, a lot of things are not going to work out of the box because we don't have the VirtualBox guest tools installed. And in order to install the guest tools, there are some things that we have to do first because the system might be out of date. So what you're going to do is you're going to type in sudo into the terminal and do sudo apt update and then double ampersand sudo apt upgrade. And this will basically... Um, install anything that I mean sorry update anything that needs to be updated since you know the operating system was shipped out and this is usually pretty big like about half a gigabyte because there's a lot that you know has become outdated in the time so just let this run and we have a few more commands to run before this is fully finished Okay, so those commands have finished running finally. That took a while, but they're finally done. And the next thing you want to do is actually restart your machine because uh, I'm going to do it from here. Um, restart your machine because sometimes uh, there's things that are upgraded that um, can mess with further installations. All right, so now that those are installed and we have restarted, there's a few more commands that we need to run. So open your terminal back up and type in sudo apt install build dash essential and space module dash, I can't type, assistant. Enter the password and it will install 
fairly whoa <laughs> why did it abort um i guess i typed in something wrong but anyway type in y it'll continue and it will install and this should take not nearly as long as the previous one did but it should take some time all right and finally type in sudo m a space prepare there you go. So that's done. And finally, at the top here, you can click Devices. This is in VirtualBox. And click Insert Guest Editions CD Image. And if your uh, installation is like mine, it should already have it. If not, you might have to download it from the website, but you should already have it here. Um, click Run. And then type in your password to authenticate and the VirtualBox guest editions installer will install and this will install all the fancy things that make it work beautifully with VirtualBox and for some reason this doesn't work um, if you only try to do this without doing all the previous commands so that's where I got tripped up when I first installed this but after this I believe we will be done and you'll be able to um, you know, use all the features that VirtualBox has to offer. So once that's done, simply restart your machine and you are good to go. One last thing before I end the video, um, once you boot back up after all those um, commands have been run and the guest editions have been installed, go to machine and go to settings and go to general, advanced, and change these two settings here from disabled to bi-directional so this is shared clipboard and drag and drop this allows for your host computer so the computer you're using to virtualize this to communicate directly with the vm to the point where if you wanted to um and now let me open up is g edit the thing text editor maybe yeah text editor i'm going to copy some text from my host computer and i should be able to paste it in and yes i i copied the obs projects url and I just was able to paste it in to my guest OS. And so likewise, this should copy. I can copy from here, control C, open up Linux Mint, and you'll see in the URL here, we have um, the thing that I copied. So uh, that's all I have to show you guys. Hopefully this is helpful for you and you'll, you're able to get you know Linux Mint running well on your computer. Um, and yeah, comment if you have any issues or if this worked out for you and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I do videos all about development, Linux, computers in general, Windows, whatever it might be, um, kind of a tech, tech enthusiast. So, um, yes, thank you for watching and, uh, I bid you farewell.